Myrtle had lived in the village of Upwell her entire life. She knew every cobblestone. She knew where every lilac bush was. She knew everything, which was a good because as she got older, she started to lose her vision and eventually was blind. And in her blindness, her hearing became more keen. Her sense of smell became more keen, her sense of touch. But then as she got older and older still, she started losing her hearing and she needed hearing aids. But being blind, sometimes the hearing aids would fall out and she'd inadvertently step on them. And then she'd have to kind of feel around, pick up the pieces and make that trek that she knew so well to the post office to have them help send them back and send a replacement. And as she was walking, she didn't even need to use a cane because she could feel her feet, the cobblestones, the road. She, and she knew from the smell she was passing the cemetery and she could hear some noises, but not enough to really know what was going on. So while she was at the post office, having them take care of her replacements of her hearing aids, she mentioned that she needed a handyman to come over because she thinks she's got some water in her cellar and, and just, you know, something doesn't quite seem right where they, it doesn't smell right. You know, when you've got water and it stands there, kind of smells. So they said, yes, they would send a workman over. Well, in a few days, she returned home to find the furniture had been moved. So when she walked in, she bumped into a table that shouldn't have been there, that didn't belong there. And she's feeling around and realized her furniture has been moved. And she made her way to her kitchen and realized she'd been robbed. She had money in a sugar bowl and it was gone. So she contacted the police and the policeman came and, and they said, oh, probably some boys, you know, just pranking you, you know, moving your furniture around. And as far as the money, oh, well, we have no way of knowing. And she goes, I know. The person who stole that money smoked Prince Albert in a pipe. I would know that smell anywhere. Find the man who smokes Prince Albert. He's the thief. Police shrugged. Well, we'll see what we can do. So a few days later, Tom came over and said, I'm a handyman and I understand that you have a complaint about water or something in your cellar. You know, why don't you show me your cellar and I'll see what the problem is. So she walks over and opens the door. And as she has him pass her, she sniffs and smells Prince Albert tobacco. And she says, you, you broke in here and stole my money. And he kind of laughed and he goes, lady, you're blind. You can't see, you know, what makes you think it was me? She goes, I know it was you because I smell that same odor. And finally he admitted it. <laughs> he can't prove it. What are you gonna do to me anyway? With that, she kicked him down the stairs and closed and locked the door. Well, she heard a splashing. She knew there was water down there, but what she didn't know is he'd broken his femur. So with the door locked, he took her earplug, her earring, hearing aid out, put it down and very carefully stepped on it. And scooping it up, made her way to the post office to have them send out for a replacement and just say, oh, well. Well, a week later, her hearing aid replacement came and, and they brought it to her. And, and she goes, I, there, there's still that funny smell coming out of the basement. Would you send Tom, the handyman, to come take a look at it? And they said, well, nobody's seen Tom for the last week. You know, we don't know what happened to him. And she says, well, we'll just send somebody. And that is when someone was sent to find Tom on her basement steps with a broken leg. And he had died. So stealing from someone who was blind but not stupid was not a good idea.